In the name of Jesus, amen. Our text for tonight is Psalm 51, the psalm that we sang earlier, uh, especially where King David uh, writes in verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Here ends our text. In Luther's small catechism, the question is asked, what is confession? And the answer is, confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution, that is, forgiveness of sins. From the pastor, as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it, our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. Again, the first part of confession is that we confess our sins. And this is exactly what King David did in Psalm 51. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash me from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. King David confesses that he has transgressions, he has iniquities, and that he has sins. What sin did King David commit? First of all, he broke the ninth commandment by coveting Bathsheba, another man's wife. Then he broke the sixth commandment when he committed adultery with her. Then he tried to cover up these sins by committing more sins. And then he broke the fifth commandment by plotting Uriah's death. And the plot worked. Uriah died by the arrows of the Amorites. Have you been so angry at someone that you want to kill them? This happens between siblings and friends and co-workers and family. Have you ever committed a sin and then tried to cover it up? Perhaps you lied about it or blamed someone else. Our sinful flesh never likes to humble itself and it never wants to be honest before God. And one of the reasons we are here tonight is to humble ourselves before God and be honest with all our sin. As time went on, King David married Bathsheba and 2 Samuel chapter 11 says, quote, But the thing that David did, had, had done, displeased the Lord. The Lord was very angry. We will learn later on that God forgave King David to be sure of his sin, but David suffered from the consequences of his sin. If you were in God's shoes... What would you do to King David? How would you treat him? According to the law of Moses, one could be punished by death if caught in adultery. As a matter of fact, death is exactly what David said the rich man deserves in Nathan's parable. But King David didn't know it was a parable. When a traveler came for food, the rich man took, one, took a lamb from the poor man to feed the traveler. And the rich man had plenty of sheep, but he took the one and only lamb that, 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 that the poor man owned. And David basically said, as the Lord lives, the rich man who has done this deserves to die. The rich man has lots of sheep. Why take the only one, the lamb from the poor man this rich man deserves to die. And the prophet Nathan said to David, You are the man. In other words, you deserve to die because of the sin you committed against God, against Bathsheba, and against Uriah. You deserve to die. God sent the prophet Nathan to David to preach the law so that David would see his sin and confess it. David then, broken by the law, said, 
I have sinned against the Lord. King David also said in Psalm 51, Against you, you only, O God, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And he also said in Psalm 32, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. How should you examine yourself? You should consider your place in life according to the Ten Commandments. Are you a husband, wife, father, mother, son, daughter? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you wronged anyone by word or deed? The answer is yes. King David said in Psalm 52, Surely I was... I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. And we all can say the same thing, that we have been sinful from the time we were conceived in our mother's womb. And we are sinful today. And even the mark on our foreheads reminds us of our mortality and the death that is coming upon us. We will always be sinful uh, as long as we live in the face in the, of this earth, which is to say that we are always in need of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. So before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. And before our neighbor, we should plead guilty with those sins that we have sinned against him or her. And if you have any sins which you know and feel in your heart, then you confess them, you can confess them privately before the pastor and then hear God's individual word of forgiveness spoken for you and upon you. What is the second part of confession? The second part of confession is that we receive absolution. That is forgiveness of sins. Absolution is the forgiveness of sins bestowed freely upon us. On account of Christ. It is the very voice of the gospel. The gospel has a voice to itself. Bespeaking you righteous. On account of Christ. <clears throat> After David confessed his sin. The prophet Nathan spoke absolution. Saying to David. The Lord has taken away your sin. You shall not die. David confessed his sin, and he received absolution, that is forgiveness, from the prophet Nathan, as from God himself. King David said in Psalm 32, Blessed is a man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. David was blessed because the Lord does not count David's iniquity against him, but it is forgiven, and so also for you. Blessed are you. When the Lord counts no iniquity against you. God says in Psalm 103 that he removes our sin as far as the east is from the west. And he remembers it no more. In Isaiah chapter 1 the Lord says though your sins are like scarlet they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson they shall be as white as wool. So you should regard the absolution spoken by the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing in it. And by it, your sins are forgiven before God in heaven. King David said in Psalm 51, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. David does not say, Forgive me, O Lord, because of my sincerity. Forgive me because of my merit. Forgive me because I will try harder next time. Rather, he says, Forgive me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion. You see, he sees God as a God who is merciful and who will give mercy on account of the promised Messiah. We say, forgive me, O God, because of the death of Christ, because of his merit, because of his sacrifice. We are forgiven then on account of Christ and not on account of our works or our sincerity. We are forgiven for the sake of Christ. 
What moves God to forgive your sin? God is moved to forgive your sin because of the sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross. God is most gracious and merciful to you because Jesus died for all of your sins. David was supposed to die, but Jesus died in David's place. We are, we're, are supposed to die because of our sins and eternal death, but Jesus died in our place. Therefore, we shall not die eternally, but we shall live. Yes, Jesus made that righteous payment for your sins upon the cross. Therefore, God forgives your sin in Christ. Even in the service tonight, you pray that God would forgive your sin for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of his beloved son, Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 says that in Christ you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So we are here tonight in repentance, acknowledging our sin, which caused Jesus to die upon the cross. We are here tonight to confess before God that we have transgressed his ways, but we are also here tonight to be forgiven and to receive God's mercy in Christ Jesus, not only by means of absolution, but also by means of our Lord's body and blood. King David was repentant and sorry for his sins. And by God's grace, we also are repentant and sorry for our sin. David said it this way, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. A broken spirit means a repentant spirit. A, a contrite heart means a, means a repentant heart. And repentance means that we will turn from our evil way and live. It means that we are sorry for our sin and we don't want to do it again. It also means that we believe that we have faith in God's mercy and forgiveness upon us. So since God has forgiven us, may we forgive one another. Since God has been merciful to us poor sinners, may we have mercy upon others. Jesus said in our Holy Gospel for today, <clears throat> For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Christ and his gospel is our real treasure. Faith looks to Christ alone for our forgiveness. Our heart is centered on Christ alone for life and salvation. Moth and rust and thieves cannot destroy the most precious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So during this Lenten season, may we fix our eyes on Jesus, who went to the cross for us, who was made sin for us, and who rose again on that third day. In Christ, you are forgiven of all your sin. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.